Hey everyone, it's Megan with Alder and Nance, and today we are making bell bottoms. So I have a couple pair of pants that are so threadbare now that I need to try my hand at making a pair of pants. So my favorite pa pair of pants I have ever owned was a pair of bell bottoms, and you can't find bell bottoms like you used to back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and they have always been my favorite type. So when I went looking around for bell bottom patterns in my pattern stash, I have two. I have McCall's M8807 and I also have a Mimi G by Simplicity pattern that is S8655. And I went up on Instagram and I put these two up against each other and so far this one has won. Plus I kind of like the design details and I'll show a close up right here of this pattern because it's got the front pocket detail that is an option on there and you can also option in the back pockets. And I also loved how the butt seam of this pattern was curved and I was like, oh, that's a really neat detail for this pair. Now I like the Mimi G pattern, but it doesn't seem to have front pockets on it, in which that's okay. But for my first pair, I really want front and back pockets on my jeans. And before I even started making Skylar's Winter Formal, I had picked up this denim from Joann's and knew I was going to be making a pair of pants for myself and it's let me unfold a little bit I don't remember exactly how much fabric I got I think I got like three yards so fold this over it's got some stretch to it so when I went to look up to see what size I would need to make in the McCall's pattern the waist on the 22 is a 37 but when I actually had to go open up the pattern and start searching all over and I'll put the finished measurements right here of this for you to be able to see. But I'm actually able to size down to a size 18, which is a waist of 32. So it has quite a bit of ease in the waist, in the hips, everything. Um, but I'm going to have to grade down to size 16 on the hips. I might go ahead and just make a straight 18 on this after I see everything put together. It also calls for a zipper in which in my, I went garage shopping with James a while ago and a lady had a bunch of patterns from the 70s and she had some sewing notions. She had this metal zipper. It says skirt or neck, but I think it'll be fine for putting into my jeans. I also have some hook and bars and to add a little bit of extra detail I am going to go ahead and put a couple of studs in it since I do have the stud kit. I have not done studs before and I thought adding some studs into it might make them look really neat. Um, I do have a bunch of denim threads so I've got several denim threads. But for the top stitching, because these pants feature quite a bit of top stitching, I've got three choices. I've got a pink, a green, and then I've got this red. Um, I don't have regular top stitching thread, and I'm not going back out to Joann's right now to pick up some top stitching thread. So I figured do a double layer of one of these, and I'm leaning more towards this red, so I might just wind this up, ah, wind this up onto a bobbin and do a double layer of this red thread to do all of the top stitching. Um, but I am going to go ahead and instead of cutting out the pattern that way, I can save and refold this up and put it up. I don't want to cut into my patterns. Um, I'm going to lay it out on my brown paper and use the Sharpie to transfer it over to the brown paper. That seems to work really well. I've done that once in the past and I'm able to transfer everything from the regular pattern on over to the brown paper without actually fully damaging the original pattern because who knows, this pattern might be worth something in the future or 
when I'm old and gray, I might end up selling it to someone like Stephanie Canada in the future. Who knows? So I've learned I don't want to ever cut into my actual patterns unless it's like the Halloween costume I did for Ryan. I didn't really care about that pattern. I just wanted to go ahead and get it done and over with. So with this one, I am going to transfer it over. I am going to do a mock-up in my black cotton, which is up there, or I do have, and it's a sheet. So this is just a little bit from something that I was working on for Skylar. Um, I've got several of these black sheets that I can use, and it's a thicker cotton. Um, and I'm hoping that this will be a good wearable muslin or wearable mock-up. And I might actually do this one with the pink in it and with the regular denim do this. And hopefully this comes out real well and I'll be able to wear it. This doesn't have any stretch in it, but I like my jeans to fit a little bit tighter in the waist and hips. But I cannot stand having any tightness around my ankles. So that's why I wanted to make the bell bottoms. So... All right, guys, I will see you here in a little bit when I go to actually trace out my pattern. Bye! So I have gone ahead and I've gone through and actually done all of my pattern pieces. This is just one set and I've got another set here. Yes, I have messy handwriting, sorry. Okay, so now everything is cut out and I am ready to start working on my mock-up. But I'm actually going to do that one tomorrow because I have some household chores that I need to be doing today. Okay, just ignore the fact that I've got lint all over my black fabric and the black is also not showing you exactly the true color of everything. But I have gone in and installed the zipper on this and I'm just slowly working on it along the way. And I went in and did a double row of top stitching in red on the center, not center front, but the front of the leg panels. I haven't been filming any of this because I've been trying to really concentrate on making these pants. And as you can see, I messed up right here a little bit. So a little bit of wear. But I've got the front side pockets just about completed. Well, not just about. I've got the front of my pants completed. And these are actually really nice and stretchy. So I went ahead and I monogrammed the A and N from Alder and Nance onto the back pocket. And it's not perfect, but it's my first try trying to embroider with my sewing machine. Okay, a couple of things I do need to mention is the waistline of the black mock-up ended up being way too tight. So I added 5 eighths of an inch to each seam on these pants. And that ended up making the waist way too big for my denim pants version and it 
it's fine. I'm able to use my little black belt that I ended up making to bring the waistline in a little bit. Next time, I'm only going to add a quarter of an inch if I buy this type of denim. But the black cotton was too tight and I just graded that down towards the hip line. Otherwise, these fit perfectly. Um, I did end up taking the crotch area and ended up adding a little bit more to the crotch line because it was giving me major wedgie with the black ones. I probably didn't need to do that with this denim because it ended up stretching and fitting really nicely everywhere. So I don't think I have too much fabric in the crotch area, but eh, it is what it is. And this is what they turned out to look like. I know this video is coming out Monday because I'm recording this Monday morning and this should be out by 5 p.m. Central Time. But hopefully in the future, I'll start actually sharing all of my process of making, not just kind of giving a later on review. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Bye.